Hello and welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Um, today I have a bunch of like half done sweaters. Most of you who, excuse me, most of which you've probably already seen if you watch my channel and or the Wooly Thistle Shop cast. Um, but yeah, I have been trying to like juggle these three bigger projects as well as some smaller ones but they've been kind of falling by the wayside because <laughs> um i am on the sweater kick so this happens a lot with me i feel like especially with socks like I'll, I'll be like in a socks mood and then i'll be like i gotta not do socks and i don't know if it's like i need a break from socks because the needles are tiny or whatever or it's like oh no this other thing is getting my attention so i'm not sure um today i'm wearing a vanilla sweater it's August in Maryland, so it's like still warm, but it's like not too hot right now. I mean, I'm inside, so like whatever. But um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's warm, but I was like, you know what? It's almost fall, we're getting ready. I'm talking about sweater knitting today. I might as well put on a sweater. This is knit in Rosa Pomar Pagel Hall in the orangey pink color that I can't name, but I will write it in the show notes. Um, you can get this, Actually, you can get it a bunch of places. The Woolly Thistle carries Pickle Hall and a bunch of other Rosa Pomar yarns. And it's very inexpensive. I mean, it's woolly, really woolly. It's quite rustic. It blooms amazingly. Um, it has a it kind of Shetland-like feel to it in terms of its spin and its content. But it's, to me, it was a little more bristly than Shetland. Shetland wool tends to be pretty soft, even in the hand. Um, but, you know, it, it wears well if you're like a woolly wool person. Um, you'll like it, and again, like, I assume, like, knitters are really diverse, and, like, people who watch my channel might be, like, really into Wooly Wool, because they saw me at the Wooly Thistle, and now they watch my channel, or, like, whatever, but, like, some people don't, and so, if you don't, this is scratchy. <laughs> um, I guess you can, like, knit something and then wear something underneath it, like, I do that with my outerwear sweaters anyway, like just because I'm wearing it like outside and it's cold and I'm gonna wear a long sleeve shirt underneath. So, you know, I wouldn't necessarily shy away from it unless your hands really don't like the actual process of knitting with it. Um, but yeah, it's, anyway, it's, it's, I like vanilla sweaters a lot. This one had some mods I did like full long sleeves. Um, I didn't do a split hem, did two by two rib everywhere to finish it off, you know, but it's Wooly Thistles pattern, top down raglan. Um, pretty standard stockinette, mostly knit stitches. Um, yeah, the pattern features, um, I think three quarter sleeves and not quite as tapered. And also they, there's this beautiful little seed stitch split hem that Kareen designed. It's gorgeous. I'll link the pattern in the show notes. Um, yeah, so I've been working on three sweaters in the past. Well, one of them I just cast on on Friday cause it was TWT sweater cal cast on day. And the other two I've been working on for a little while. Um, so the common denominator of these three sweaters is that I've gotten really into these Jogu shorty needles um, that are like tiny circumference needles for sleeves and socks and stuff. So um, the other ones in here too, there's two different sets and I have both of them because I use needles of all sizes. So these ones are the sizes four through eight, US four through eight, and these are zero through three. So I'm gonna open this and show you what's inside so you can see what I mean. Um, okay, so there's teeny cables. They come with five inch, six inch, and eight inch cables. If you watched my Shopcast segment last Friday, I was talking about this too. Um, there's just this little bag. So this white thing with the thing that's coming off of it, that's a stopper. There's also T-pins to um, tighten the cords to the cables. There's stitch markers and there's, if you look really closely, there's tiny little cable connectors, which is like that thing that you can see there. Those connect cables to each other in case you need to make a longer cable and you don't have one. And then obviously needles, beautiful little case. Everything's labeled. These ones tend to fall out a little more easily than the smaller ones. Cause I think the smaller ones have a little thing to secure them but two sets of tips for each needle from four through eight. Two inch, teeny, teeny, teeny. These are very small. 
This is like the tip of a nine inch circular sock needle. It's a two inch tip and then you use a five inch cord and two four, two two inch tips plus a five inch cord is nine inches. So this is the same size as a nine inch circular sock needle. So if you want a nine inch circular needle, but like in sizes that aren't, I mean, you could buy fixed in any size from Chiago, I think, but three inches is what I usually use for sleeves and stuff, collars and things like that. So, you know, it's one of those things where I notice that like, if I start a sleeve on a 16 inch needle, I eventually have to like start magic looping or something. Um, and if you have this, you can start with a 16 inch needle or you can start with like a 14 inch because you're using three inch tips and a six, inch, eight inch cord. And then you can like progressively move to a smaller cable size um, to make like, I find 10 inches or I guess it's 12 inches. Cause I usually go, I'll start with the eight and then I'll go down to the six inch tip or cord. And then that's 12 inches. And it's like a 12 inch circular is usually good for a sleeve too. So that's not gonna work for like a mid or a sock necessarily, but it works for me for sleeves. So generally I wanted to try these because I really hate knitting sleeves. And it's not that I like, you know, I, I find it, for bottom up, I find it easier to work on sleeves because you don't have to do it last. I mean, you don't have to do it last on a top down sweater, but usually you do it last. Most people do that just because that's what happens. I frequently don't do the sleeves last. I'll do them before I finish the body or do the collar or whatever it is, but it doesn't really matter um, because it's just like, I find that your, your circular knitting is just so easy because you don't have to stop. You don't have to pause. You don't have to pull something and switch and you don't have to be like, am I at the end of the row or not? With circular knitting, so easy. <laughs> you just run and run and run and run and run. You don't think about it. And you do have to like twist the, like if you're working on a sleeve and you go around, you gotta twist it back and you get back to the beginning of the round. So it's not like this twisted knot, but otherwise you don't really have to stop for anything. And you can use a row counter. I don't know. I just find it like a lot more pleasant. And the first experience I had doing this was like a couple years ago when I was knitting a couple bottom up sweaters for some friends. Um, and they were men. So their upper arms were bigger than mine. And I could do almost the entire sleeve on a 16 inch needle. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this was so fast. Wow. So I was really like blown away by that. And then, I don't know, I did try nine inch circular sock needles once and I really didn't like it. Um, I have heard Andrea Mowry say that um, continental knitters tend not to like the nine inch circular because of the way they hold needles. And I hold needles like a continental knitter, but I actually insert my tip of my needle into the back loop and wrap it up around the needle instead of under and up. So um, from back to front over the top of the needle. So that's, I'm a combination style knitter. Um, and again, I hold the yarn in my left hand. So that's the main issue. It's like, if you're using your right hand to kind of do most of the work, including like entering the needle into the stitch and throwing, then I think the nine inch circular doesn't bother as many people because of the way they hold the needles. That's what Andrew Mowry said. And that kind of makes sense to me. So I'm like, all right, I'm going with that. That's cool. So. Um, I didn't know if I would like these, but I, the three inches. Okay. It took me like a day or two to get used to it. And at first my hands felt a little crampy, but then I was like, Oh no, this is fine. And it just like the sleeves just flew. So it sounds like I'm just doing an advertisement for these. I kind of am. These are amazing. I wouldn't do it if I didn't believe that, but no one's paying me to say this. <laughs> Shockingly. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you can get these a variety of places. Um, like look, a lot of local yarn stores carry Chiaogu if you want to try them out. They're not cheap. Um, you know, Chiaogu sets are, are not cheap. There's a lot of tips in there and there's, and they're, they're really nice. They're not going to do you wrong forever. So what I would say though, um, yeah, a lot of people get these on Amazon. You can get them on Amazon, but what I learned, um, at a yarn store once was that this is like the most frequently duped thing of in knitting is Chiaogu needles because they're so like expensive. I mean, they're not super expensive. Like if you're just buying fixed circular needles, they're like between nine and $15, depending on where you get them, I think. But like, big, that's a big, you know, you can, that's a pretty big ticket price for like something that's probably apparently very easy to dupe. 
So they just like people who dupe them, they just don't like they, the cords aren't as good, the needles or whatever. It's not as good. So apparently like Chiago has had to like change all their SKUs so that, um, yeah, so that they're like not whatever. So that their, their products don't like illegally get confused with anything. Um, so these are real ones. I got these at a yarn store in Annapolis called Knits and Pieces. But you can get them, like I said, a lot of local yarn stores, like the Woolly Thistle. You can get them at the Woolly Thistle. They sell Chowgu needles there. They even sell fixed ones now. Um, but the sets are really worth it. And I have a lot of, um, I have a lot of fixed circular needles from Chowgu that I've been collecting since the start of the pandemic when I started using Chowgu needles. And like, it's nice to have the fixed ones, but it's definitely like, you know, I have a, an amazing bag. My friend Monica's mom sewed it for me. Monica, this is like a total tangent. My, my Monica's my best knitting friend from Philly. We met like five years ago and we both moved to Philly and we were sad and lonely and grad students. And um, we just like decided the day we met, we were like, we're gonna be best friends. And we still are like, I mean, she's one of the most incredible people. I know we actually met through church music stuff because she's an organist, but we both are knitters. And um, so it's nice to, I was in her wedding last year and her husband just got a job here. So they moved here a couple weeks ago and I just like, I saw her twice this week. She's pretty busy because she works in DC, but um, I've gotten to see her a couple times this week and like knit with her. And it's just like, oh my God, so nice. It's so nice to have just, I don't know. She's like really refreshing and I, I've really missed her and I never thought we would ever live in the same place again because they were living in Texas and I was living here and you know it's hard to stay in touch when you're all busy and then she moved down the block so literally down the block it's like a 15 minute walk to her apartment and I'm so happy um so Monica doesn't have time to watch this but she knows that I'm really happy uh that she's back anyway um something about Monica I don't remember what it was now. Wow, that's crazy. Um, oh yeah, wow, I really just completely forgot what I was saying. Something about these needles and shorty needles and, oh, Monica's mom. She made my knitting needle bag. Monica's mom is an amazing fiber artist. Like she's really, really good at sewing. And she always finishes Monica's projects like really beautifully. Like Monica has like something in pieces. She's, she sends it to her mom and she's like the amazing finisher. Um, and she has a embroidery machine. So she made me this little, um, it's like the perfect size for needles. Um, and I would show it to you if I had it on me, but it's in the living room. Um, and it has a zipper, so it closes. And it has an Eeyore on it and I love Eeyore. So um, yeah. If you know me in real life, you might know that I have an Eeyore, like a stuffed Eeyore that I've had since I was born. And everyone thinks it's the grossest thing on earth, but I still have him. He's like the Velveteen Rabbit. He's been repaired a lot of times. Anyway, my mom is laughing right now. <laughs> She's watching this. Um, anyway, I have a lot of needles, a lot of fixed needles, but it's still like sometimes they just, you take them out and you don't put them back and there's just like a lot of knitting stuff everywhere all over my house in my room in the basement in the living room where most of my stuff is in my project bags and I'm like okay I'm getting to the point where I want those chow Gu interchangeable sets <laughs> especially the four inch ones because I can never find my four inch um my 16 inch needles and for those of you who are unaware four inch um four inch two four inch tips and a Eight, eight inch cord make a 16 inch needle. So that's how you get 16 inch needle. Um, so the four inch tips make 16 inches and slightly larger, I think as well. And then there's a five inch tip set too. And I don't want the ones that go like through nine through 15. I just want like two through eight. I'm like, I never use needles bigger than that. If I do and get fixed ones, I like, but it's time. It's just like, and the case is really nice and everything is labeled. And it's like, that's what at this point, like that's just kind of what I need is like, labels <laughs> like everything needs to have a place with a label and I'm I consider getting the Maxwell utility roll which is this that's what Andrea Maurer uses is this huge needle roll that you can get from magpie fibers and it's gorgeous and it's leather and it's like $200 but I'm like no Chiagos are all labeled I'll just put them in a case all together and I'll have my needle bag um you know I already have a needle bag it's not that hard so anyway 
I completely digress. It's now been 15 minutes and I haven't shown you any knitting at all. So just needles. And I have three bags of knitting here, so let's get to it. Sorry. My face is itchy. I, it's, the pollen is bad again for, I don't know why pollen just keeps coming back in the summer, but it does. And, uh, the other day I just forgot to take my allergy pill at night, so I had to take it in the morning, and now I have to take them in the morning until I forget again. <laughs> I have to take it at night. Um, okay, so my Cloudsley. Cloudsley's almost done. And I've just broken into the third ball of yarn. But it's almost done. It has sleeves. Oh, I'm gonna have to take the sleeves out. It's like kind of a knotty mess. So here's what happened with Cloudsley. I finished it, and then I like did the welt at the bottom, which was just like a garter stitch welt, didn't take long. And then I did the sleeves and I was like, body's not long enough. And I was afraid, not afraid, aware that would probably happen. But I was like, I'm just gonna knit the sleeves and then try it on and see where we're at. And then I'll just unpick it and knit the rest of the body. So here's the back, cause that's the most exciting part. And sleeves are done. I did these on the shorty tips. Um, it's wrinkled because it's been, their sleeves have been just stuffed into the body while I continue working on the body, but I did finish them. They were really quick. Um, it was really, really quick to do these on a, yeah, on a shorty. Um, I'd put this on, but I can't because, um, the bottom's not on a barber cord. <laughs> it's just chilling on the needles. So I think I'm going to do like one or two more repeats of that pattern and then I'm gonna do um so I also I finished it with the with the garter welt and I didn't really like that it just I know that these things block out but it curled up too much and I was like I'm just gonna finish it with the same one by one rib as I did on the sleeves so just to make it easier almost never do this but I actually did the uh pearl ridge along the sleeve this time easier when things are on circular needles to just be like okay fine it's also a good way to mark the end of the round. If you lose your stitch marker, you're okay. Um, but yeah, the I, I continued. I feel like this really started off as like feeling like really slow. And then all of a sudden, once I got like partway down the body, I was like, okay, I'm speeding through this. Like I, I had a better handle on it. It was going a lot faster, um, that kind of thing. So, and then I completely neglected it all week after I like finished the sleeves and I need to go. I think today might be the day. This is what gets finished because I would be nice because I have two other big sweater products on my needles. And at the, like recently, I've really tried to just keep it to one, at least one active one, because I have a couple of Fair Isle sweater whips that are like totally languishing. But um, fall is usually when I pull out the Fair Isle big guns. So I'll get to it. Um, but this is the front. I still also have to finish the neck. The neck, like this part of the neck actually lays flat and I really like it. Um, and I wouldn't even do any finishing except that this bottom, the actual where it meets, needs a little finishing and then the back rolls. So I don't know how the, how it gets finished in the pattern, but I think I'm just gonna follow the pattern for finishing because it's just a little easier. But it is a nice edge, easy for picking up stitches. I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, you can see that. It's It almost looks like I-cord, but it's not. There's just a pearl stitch that in there that just kind of like lifts the knit, knit stitches out a little bit between those two knit stitches. There's a pearl ridge, which is just odd, but it totally works. There's like knit two, pearl one, and like even on the back, you can see it looks like I cord or something. And I didn't slip any stitches. It's just like some, Isabel Kramer just like, I don't know. I feel like she just has these magical qualities of her patterns, but I did really enjoy the slip stitch cable pattern here. Like because this, cable stitches had been slipped for two rounds you didn't need a cable needle because it didn't try and pull itself out because it was a stitch from two rows below that you were cabling which is really cool um kind of weird but like I was like oh this really works because <laughs> like you know if you're cabling without a cable needle sometimes those stitches will try to pull themselves out like in ladder but um they don't do that if they're slipped stitches because all the other stitches on the other side of them are already knit in so it has nowhere to go I mean it does if you like hold the ladders out but like it doesn't naturally do that which is cool and you can tell if you've made a mistake because you'll see it's trying if it's trying to pull itself out you're like oh this is the wrong stitch to cable um but yeah I used this is the third ball so I'll, I'll hardly have used any of the third ball um but this is I have an episode on this if you want some more information um it's a few episodes back 
but it's called the Cloudsley Sweater by Isabel Kramer. And this is 100% blue face luster wool from Pennsylvania that I got at Maryland Sheep and Wool. Um, and again, I don't have the tag with me in this bag, but please go watch my Cloudsley episode and there's like links to where you can find the people who made it. I don't know if you can buy it online. They might just have it at Fiber Festivals, but holy cow, it is gorgeous. And I actually bought sock yarn from them too. It's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. So I definitely recommend. Okay, there's that. <laughs> now a revisit to Open Glow. Well, things are look looking a little different. I didn't work on it that much this week because um, I went back to the Cloudsley and I um, also, cause Hannah had had to rip part of hers out. And Hannah, my roommate and I are knitting this together. We're doing knit along for Alpenglow for Rhinebeck. Um, I plan to be at Rhinebeck. I don't know if I will wear the Alpenglow to Rhinebeck cause I want to wear Fair Isle to Rhinebeck. Like I said, but last week, but anyway, I did um, I finished the collar. Hannah just made her collar yesterday. I was out. We'd had a, we all had a really busy week. So all of us were super tired. And so Hannah was like, I'm staying home. Cause we, we were going to our friend's housewarming in um, about 20 minutes from here. And uh, Jordan and I went, but Hannah was like, I'm too tired guys. I got I got it's been too big of a week. And like, I mean, I was definitely feeling that too. Although it's like my, it's like one of my really good friends. So I was like, I'll go to his housewarming and yeah, it'll be fine. A bunch of my friends were there. So it was nice. Um, my friend Mike's housewarming and then his little baby niece was there and it's always like really fun to play with a six month old baby. <laughs> so, um, sorry if I'm totally mumbling. I think I'm gonna get a lapel mic for this because I, I know cause I always record on like Saturday and Sunday mornings and the girls are asleep upstairs and I, I, prob I don't think they can hear me if I talk at a normal volume. Like my room is there, it's right there. So if someone were in my room, they could probably hear everything I was saying, but I don't think, their rooms are both at the front of the house, especially Hannah's way upstairs. Anyway, Hannah did her collar yesterday and we came back. We'd been out for like four hours and we came back and she was like, you guys, this is taking so long. And I was like, oh my gosh, I know. I knit that on a size one needle, it took forever, but the collar is so pretty that I didn't even, it hurt my hands, but I didn't care. This I think I can put on, maybe. We'll see, maybe I'll, can you get your hand into a 16 inch cord? With a 16 inch, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Oh, this is, I'm just gonna slip it. I'm gonna talk to you while I slip stitches. Oh, I should hold the whole thing up before I do this. Here's the whole thing. So I've done part of the body and I've done a good part of the first sleeve and not the second sleeve. So. Um, what I am using, um, Fidgetal Farm Yarn from Vermont. It's kind of like, I would say having that with some hand spun, it's kind of like hand spun in that it's like a little thick and thin. It's not super, um, even, but so is Spin Cycle. So like, and Spin Cycle, Melancholia, Dyed in the Wool, and then I've got my hand dyed Surrey Alpaca Silk that I did, and then I've got Malabrigo Arroyo and Anniversario. So this is just a quick recap. If you want a full, full details of all these yarns and where I bought them and like full digressions and stories, you can watch my episode from last week, which it was about this. So I'm just gonna slip this onto a 40 inch um, circular so that I can try on the sleeve. I have barber cords, but there you'll see the barber cords are, well, one of them's in this project so I can try it on, but the other ones in, <laughs> the sleeve ones are both in sleeves that I just finished last night that you're about to see. So. Um, anyway, I was saying, so Hannah's using also spin cycle, but like she's using for her main color, she's using, uh, just, um, knit picks like wool of the Andy sport and this beautiful dark red color. So pretty. Um, they look so different. Like our colorways, it, you would never think it was the same sweater. I mean, like a knitter would know, but like all of our friends who come in are like, wow, those are really different. And we're like, oh, it's the same sweater. And they're like, why? Cause you know, it's on someone's lap. You can't really see, but anyway digression um her wool of the andy sport is my it's like processed at a huge nitpix manufacturing plant so it's a lot smoother um than mine and you can tell like mine is so pebbly um that because of the hand it like 
it's it's just wooly wool and it's like that's why we pluck our knits like it's not gonna come out that pebbly and having blocked many many knits before and knowing very well that how to knit knits block I'm not worried like I've knit with this yarn before and it's blocked so amazingly well but it is kind of funny to watch it I'm like wow this is like oh sorry it's a little wet I just took a shower so my hair is wet um digression one thing I do sometimes is buy t-shirts that are like not the same color as my vanilla sweaters because it's hard to match them exactly but like in the same realm as the colors so that you can it's not so noticeable like at the collar where you can see through the collar okay anyway so about the collar here speaking of collars I have not decided yet if I'm gonna fold it in or do a turtleneck because I actually kind of like the turtleneck look but it might kind of pull up if it's a turtleneck. So like, I need to, I need to see, I need to decide. But anyway, it's a pretty high turtleneck. You can see that this is not, the body is not nearly long enough, but um, I do like it. It's really cool. And so, you know, I'm getting there with the sleeve, but um, I've done, so that was part of the first one was part of the body because this is before I separated. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've done 10 sleeve repeats. So that's like 90 rows because it's each one is, it's supposed to be eight rows between blocks. It's like the mosaic blocks, but for some stupid reason I did seven on between these two. And so I've just done seven to keep it even. There are eight between this and the first one, but I was like, that doesn't matter. Um, um, so I'm also thinking this is going to fall a lot better across the shoulders after it's blocked. One thing about this pattern that I will say is different from a lot of yoke sweater patterns is that the, the increases don't come right at the beginning. A lot of them, like there's an increase round like here, here, and and, uh, and he, like and here. And so this is right at the end of the body. There might even be an increase row here. I think there might be. And usually the rule of thumb, if you're designing a yoke sweater, and this is what Strange Brew tells you. If, so Strange Brew is the tin can knits, yoke sweater, design your own thing. They say you should not start those either increases or, so if you're going top down, they say you should be done with those yoke increases by halfway through the yoke to accommodate shoulders properly. Um, Cause this is the widest part of your chest. And so increasing here and here doesn't make a lot of sense in terms of a good fit. So that is something that you might notice in this pattern is that the increases come kind of later, which is nice when you're knitting because there's not as many stitches in the yoke, but you may notice, especially if you're wider shoulders, that that doesn't work out. You could try knitting the Alpenglow too, which is designed for men. So the yoke is deeper and um, just like a little bit more. I think there's more increases at the beginning. If I had known that I might actually have just bought that version of the pattern and knit it because my shoulders are broad. So if you have broad shoulders, even if you're a lady like me, um, you might choose the Alpen Glow 2 just for that reason. Um, I'm sorry, I keep touching this because it's Surrey Alpaca and I know I'm going to do that every time I wear this sweater. Um, but regardless, this is really going to just chill after it's blocked. It's just going to be like, oh, okay, that's where we're supposed to be at. And it looks so cool. I love this. It's just so funky and it's so different. Of course, now every knitter's gonna have one, but like, who cares? Everyone should have one. I'm like really excited that Hannah and I are both making it. It's really fun. And Andrea Mowry does a good job with this, especially this sweater of like making it different the whole way through the yoke and you don't wanna like stop because it's like, you're not just bored. Like you've got the Surrey and the, and the wool and then you've got the one by one here and then you've got plain and then you've got this little mountain thing and then you've got the mosaic. So yeah, this isn't super long yet. Um, so I was saying last time, I think, I think I said this, that I only have one ball spin cycle and it calls for two, but Hannah and I were both like, oh, we don't want to do corrugated ribbing. I mean, I especially don't want to do corrugated ribbing. I've done it a lot on mittens and on, yeah, especially mittens. Um, and I don't like it very much. Oh, on Shetland hats, that's where I do it. I don't mind it on the Shetland hat brim, that's fine, but I don't like doing it a lot of corrugated ribbing. So I was like, I'm probably not gonna do that anyway. So basically what I did was I divided the spin cycle skein. If you watched last week, I'm just repeating myself here, but I divided the spin cycle skein into three pieces by weight based on how many stitches are on the body and how many are on the sleeves. And this is my body one. It's not attached right now because I 
start at the sleeves. And then this is my second sleeve one. The other sleeve one's somewhere. It's on the floor because it fell out. Um, so little ones for the sleeves. And so, but I was like, oh, I don't know if that's really enough for the sleeves. Let me like do the sleeves until I get to the end of that ball, each ball, and we'll see where we're at. And then I'll finish the body and see if there's like any left over. And then I'll go back and finish the sleeves. But it's like, what if I run out on the body too? So here's what I decided to do. I was in Annapolis at Knits and Pieces where I bought these. Knits and Pieces, Annapolis is a very sweet store. There used to be a wool winders store in Annapolis too, but then they closed it. They also have a wool winders shop in Rockville. And I went there for the first time last weekend, but I'd been to the wool winders in Annapolis a bunch. But so I went to the Rockville one anyway. Um, we're not talking about wool winders. We're talking about Knits and Pieces. Knits and Pieces, they had Zauber Ball DK. So Crazy Zauber Ball has the like sock yarns that I used for my Velocore, which is like a big, huge 100 gram nylon wool color changing, it's super cool. And it's like a lot cheaper than Spin Cycle and you get, it's well, it's several dollars cheaper than one skein of Spin Cycle, but you get more than twice as much yarn. So it's different though, it's sock yarn. The colors don't change quite as fast or as, as slowly, like there's not the color shift. Spin Cycle has really cool colorways. Like there's no reason not to get that. It's just like, sometimes this is more accessible because it's either cheaper or they have it somewhere. Spin Cycle is often sold out. So. I just had a skein of this and thought I would use it, which is nice, but I got one that's like teals and kind of purpley and it's kind of like melancholia. And I was like, okay, so as long as I like do it throughout the bottom of sleeve, body sleeve, it'll look fine. But I don't anticipate needing it now, especially now that I've bought it. I'm like, oh no, I won't need it because I've bought it. <laughs> it's like, if you have the yarn, you won't need it, you know? But if you don't have the yarn, you're gonna run out. I know that's not really how life works, but sorry. Oh, I'm picking up this last one. I think I said last weekend that there's really not very much um, difference in this Melancholia skein, although there is from here to here, like there's a really big difference in this, which has got like the lighter teals and then this is like full dark teal. So my, my spin cycle skein is not gonna have too much variation, but I kind of like it this way. It's okay. I'm gonna do another Melancholia sweater. I have yarn to knit the spark spark cardigan gosh i started it ages ago i think i said this last week too yeah i started it as top down raglan because i was like i want a top down raglan version of this and it i made stupid mistakes and it didn't happen so i'm just gonna knit it normally and make someone in my life who's better at crocheting than i am crochet this deep bridge for me because there are several people who could do that that better than i could that i would be confident would not f it up or have a sewing machine or whatever. Maybe just both. Maybe I'll get someone to sew it and then also crochet the edge. And then I'll be like confident. Cause I, I'm a totally fearless seeker with non super wash wool. Totally fearless. I just, I don't even secure steaks that often. I'm just like, whatever, it's not gonna unravel. And it never does. Super wash wool is different. Super wash wool is slippery. She's a slippery gal. So anyway, people must think I'm crazy. I just talk to myself. My roommates probably can't hear me, which is an advantage. Okay, let's talk about the last sweater. Ooh. Okay. Wow, remember when I started this channel and I used to like have a script and like notes and not record at seven in the morning like a swamp hag? I don't. It's like you watch like the first episodes and then you watch this and you're like, wow, she just like really transformed. And people who know me are like, wow, yeah, this is like way more like you. <laughs> I'm not really a formal person. Um, I find that it makes me approachable because I work with college students. And so I don't want to be someone who like, they come into my office and they're like, I don't want to talk to that person. Like, I want to be like, hey, what's up? Like, you know, how's it going this week? You know, whatever, that's my job. Like it's, it's, if you work with students who are struggling, you have to put them immediately. The first priority is to be putting them at ease and not for nefarious reasons. I just want them to feel comfortable talking to an adult about something. So that's me. Anyway, last sweater. Oh, I don't have the Lopi book. Okay, well, if you watched my Wooly Thistle Shopcast on Friday, you will know what the pattern looks like for this. And if you didn't, then you can go watch it and I'll link it in the show notes. Speaking of, I'm also gonna link these um, Chagu sets from the Wooly Thistle. I'll just link the Chagu link and you can see it there. Um, cause they have them. Oh my gosh, two sleeves done. 
So if you watched my segment, you saw these in ball form and you saw the reindeer pattern that I'm making. So this is a ugly Christmas sweater that's gonna be the opposite of ugly, obviously, um, but it is quite bright. Here's the second one. So I finished them both. I did one on Friday, like again, I'm telling you MVP. Um, speaking of, I didn't mention this, but I'm actually knitting this sleeve, the Alpenglow sleeve. Sorry, I'm trying to hold it away from my coffee. This I actually am still knitting on a 16 inch needle. Um, and I'm gonna switch to the smaller one at some point. Um, the like 12 inch or whatever, so that it, um, yeah, so that it uh, can get finished on the circular needle. But anyway, I digress. Here we go. So I knit these on the shorties as well, on the shorty tips, and they blew, especially the first one, because I did it on Friday when I was like a little bit less tired. I was so tired. I just was like out really late for like three nights in a row. Well, it was two nights I was out. The last night I was in, but we had people over. One of Jordan's friends is visiting. She's really fun and lovely, and she's also a knitter. And um, we had like our other friends over um, for like a dinner on Friday, and we were all just like, but it was nice to see our friends. So, um, yeah, on Thursday, I had to play kickball. Wednesday and Thursday, I had um, workshops that I did, virtual workshops that I did, like after work and like the evenings, um, which both went well. And I did them both at my friend's apartment because like we had like social things like right there. So Nitten's apartment, he's, he lives like next to the trivia brewery and he lives next to the kickball field. And it was my first kickball game of the season, game five. Oh, it's game four because one of them got rained out. So I'm going to end up getting to go to three games. Um, and I split the season with someone else. So we each paid for half. So I'm going to get to go to half the games. Um, but Thursday, we were both really tired. And he has a lot of liquid IV, which is like electrolyte powder. And so we had liquid IVs. I actually played kickball. <laughs> this is going to sound so young person, stupid college. But... Um, I'm many years out of college, but it's the, this kickball league, you have to have a cup in your hand the whole time you're playing and it has to be at least two fingers full of liquid. It doesn't have to be beer. Most people play with beer, but I just played with liquid IV in my kickball cup the whole time. I'm not very like, um, I don't always do that much on the kickball field, but I have to be out there because there's like a number of girls you have to have if you have a team, because it's co-ed. So like all the girls that are, there were there are always like a few girls there, but like there are way more guys on our team. And so like the girls always have to be on the field and kicking and stuff, because it's like part of the rules. So anyway, I was on the field with a cup of liquid IV. You feel so much better. I felt like a new person on Thursday night, because like then we had to walk home, we had to go to the bars and like hang out for a bit. and. Then on Friday, I felt like I'd been like truly like hit by a truck. Like I was just so tired. And it was just because I was tired. Like I just had gone to bed at midnight, like two nights in a row. And I was like, well, this isn't going to happen anymore. So, and then I went to bed at midnight again on Friday. So yesterday was, was a lot. So last night I slept, I didn't go to bed at midnight and I slept until all the way until seven, which almost never happens. So I might've gotten over seven hours of sleep last night. I should check my Fitbit and find out. Um, where was I going with this? I don't know. But anyway, probably about liquid IV. I had it for the first time. It was great. Um, so anyway, I made these <laughs> on Friday and Saturday. Um, and this is this is a bottom-up lopey sweater pattern called Reindeer. And it is a sweater with trees on the sleeves and then also trees and reindeers on the yoke. And so these sleeves are done. Very nice. Yay. Um, yeah, the I, I could make them longer, but the yoke on the sweater is really deep. So these are 18 inch sleeves at the moment. They're 18 inches long. They're also gonna, you know, if you pull that and block it, it's gonna be like a little bit. Um, yeah, better. So I swatched this on a size six needle, um, but it was a wooden needle. Cause it was just like something I had. Oh, let me just show you the label for this. This is Navia uh, Traditions yarn. It's an Aran weight yarn from Faro. I got this out with the woolly thistle um, for the sweater cowl. I'm doing the woolly thistle sweater cowl. Last year I finished, the cowl ended in October. I finished my sweater in January. 
So this year I'm determined to do it correctly. If you saw my Shopcast segment, you saw my swatch. This is my swatch, I did it on a size six needle. The swatch is, I did wash it, so it's like blocked and everything. I did this on a six size six needle and the gauge is 18 stitches over four inches and I hit it bang on, so that was very exciting. Um, and, uh, but then the circular, like the little tiny circular needles, I feel like I'm knitting looser. So I did the cuff on a size four and then I did the color work on a six. And then I actually went down to a five for the sleeves. Um, I went down to a size five just because I was feeling like it was looser than my gauge swatch. Also, I went from wood to metal needles, which makes your gauge looser because there's not as much grip on the metal needles. Um, so if you're a super tight knitter, consider switching to metal needles if you don't already use them. That's just one tip might loosen up your knitting. Um, so yeah, I finished the sleeves. Now I have to do the body. Same color work on the body. And then there's, um, there's this, just like the, the dark brown and like it's, it's black and then it's essentially black and white, but it's just dark brown and, and a like heathered gray brown on the yoke with reindeers. So the background's the dark color and then the reindeers are going to be in this lighter color. So that's fun. And extremely fun. I am also doing one for my brother. I also showed this in the Lily Thistle shop cast with this unidentified wool from that I got at Maryland Sheep and Wool that reminds me a lot of Briggs and Little Heritage. It's just literally, it says, Miss, Mr. Lee Farm Studio, Oxford PA, 100% wool yarns, two ply rangely, like that's it. I don't know, Nitin and I got, both got this exact same yarn at Maryland Sheep and Wool. It was like $4 a skein or something. Um, I got five, he got like seven. He's making his cousin a sweater and his cousin is like an Eagles fan. So he wanted Eagles green. So I don't think he's started his yet either. I'm gonna start this one as soon as I finish mine. And goals this week, I do wanna start the body today of this just to get it going so that I have something to work on that's like basically vanilla. But um, I wanna, yeah, I wanna do that. But I also wanna finish Cloudsly, like ASAP, so that that's done. I need to finish some socks this week because I got my orange August socks to finish. It has not been a very socky month. That's okay. I, well, I did finish some striped socks. Like I do, um, I knit like double thick, um, thick skiving socks, um, like all ribbed, double, hold double knit picks Felici. And I do those at work, um, like on Zoom calls and stuff. And it's great. I like, I work through those and then I give them away because they're, you know, it's just knit picks Felici. Anyway. So, yeah, the plan for the sweater cowl, if you missed my Shopcast segment, the plan for the sweater cowl is actually to um, knit two sweaters in seven weeks instead of one sweater in six months like I did last year. <laughs> so, uh, this yarn isn't from the Wooly Thistle, but it's part of, it's, I've just decided to challenge myself for a time limit. This one's going to have also, it's like black and, or dark brown and white for the, um, color work and it's for Ian, my brother, because I want him to have a goofy Christmas sweater. I might give it to him. Well, no, I, cause I, I should give it to him at Thanksgiving so he can wear it to Christmas parties and stuff, but no, he'll have it forever. It's not like he's going to grow that much more. So I think he's done. He's like six, two. I mean, he's done growing up. And so I'll just make it like a little roomy, you know, cause he's gonna, he might get more muscular, I guess. He could get really fat someday too, but he's very slim now, but you know, could happen. I doubt it. He's very active. He's like, he's like really into rock climbing though. So he could get like super, like he could just continue to get super buff. Um, but yeah, our family is, is barely not that way. Like men and my family are built pretty slim. My cousin, one of my cousins is like, um, he's like a really big tennis player and like runner and stuff. And he, yeah, he's like Ian, they're just like, they're both really muscular. Um, but I don't know. I mean, my cousin Matt is like a, he's a runner. So he's just like a skinny dude. Cause he runs all the time. And his mom's like a marathon runner, my auntie Carrie. But um, yeah, they're, yeah. Anyway, that's like, I don't know why I'm talking about this now, but yeah, my brother and my cousin. <laughs>
being super athletic, <laughs> but not like bodybuilders. Anyway, that's good. It takes less yarn to make them sweaters. I have to make sweaters for, I feel like I have to make sweaters for all my cousins. I've made so many sweaters and I have not knit sweaters for any of my cousins on either side of my family. I've made both my aunts, both my mom's sisters, a cup least. Yeah, I made Margot a sweater. I didn't, yeah, I just knit the sweater and I didn't think that I was gonna make it for her and then I, all of a sudden I was like, yep, that's who this is for. Um, and I gave it to her and she wears it all the time. She lives in San Francisco, so it's like really lightweight. And then Auntie Carrie, I made her, I made her sweater for her 50th birthday. That was like a color work sweater also around the same time. But then I made her two mohair sweaters that she asked me to make her because she loves them. And I was like, yeah, of course. Um, yeah. So that was really nice. Those are, those, she, she's a good model. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, I'm knitting some other things, but uh, I can't share them because they're secret. Sorry, you'll see them at some point. But yeah, it's been a week, um, busy, 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 busy. Um, so I'm just tired, but it's nice to just have a weekend. And we were like, we just stayed in last night, got ice cream after the housewarming party. Um, and watch some TV. Oh, I did start a league of their own. If you are a prime subscriber, I don't love Amazon. I don't um, outwardly support anything they do, but my parents subscribe to Amazon Prime and it's like, okay, well, if all of us do this, let's just take advantage of them. That's kind of how I feel. I don't order very much from Amazon, um, but we have Prime Video, just like, you know, my parents have the subscription. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to piggyback off of that because someone's paying for it, might as well use it. Um, so A League of Their Own, the new, the, so the series, like they remade the original movie. It's on Prime and I watched the first one and a half of them ish yesterday. Oh my God. I love it. It's like all the things that I love in one series. So um, if you are into like, if you like the first one, you should check it out. The um, the cast is really good and it's just like, you know, it just makes you, especially in this day and age when a lot of women are not feeling so empowered, um, for, you know, people making decisions about them, um, that maybe they shouldn't be making, not to get political, but I just did, oops, um, you know, it, it's nice to, to kind of watch this, this struggle through you know, to triumph and think, you know, eventually women may get to do that again, <laughs> maybe. We'll see. Anyway, yeah, I liked it. I really like it a lot. So, have been watching anything else? Not really. I haven't gotten to watch, well, Hannah and I watched a lot of Survivor. We just watched a season of Survivor from like 10 or 12 years ago called Redemption Island, Survivor Redemption Island. We just finished it, um, and it was quite something, and I really need a break from Survivor now, because, like, when I was a kid, I used to watch it, but it's, like, you know, it's on once a week, and you, like, hate so many of the characters, characters, the contestants by the end, because they're just, like, total snakes, and I was, like, we were watching it, like, we watched an entire season in, like, a week and a half, and I was just, like, I hate all these people so much, so... I don't know if I can, I gotta take a break from Survivor and I'm enjoying a league of their own. But I'm also enjoying being busy and having things to do and going outside. But as you can see, I'm exhausted. So yeah, just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna take it easy today. Let's see what my, oh, I can't check my Fitbit readiness score cause it's on my phone, but it's probably like zero, like zero daily readiness. Like in like what it says, like it's like under like 30 daily readiness. It's like, do not exercise today. Oh no, it doesn't say that. It's like, focus on active recovery, take a walk. And I'm like, like most days it'll be like, this is how many zone minutes you should aim for. Like it'll be like, go over this number or whatever. And I go to the gym and I run on the treadmill and I always get over that number or whatever. But um, yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Anyway. anyway, I'm gonna go watch some more League of Their Own. So, 
Um, thanks for watching. You can like and subscribe. If you want to get notified, I think you have to ring the bell. Um, yeah, I, I'm getting up there in subscribers, so smash that subscribe button. Um, all show notes are in the description box underneath this, like where the title of the video is. It'll say show more. And you'll see those links. Uh, what else? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Barnaby Knits. Um, my social medias are linked down below as well. I'm on Ravelry. You can find me there, eBarnaby93, or just search, like, just click show more and click Ravelry. You can always find me on the Wooly Thistles Shopcasts about once a month, um, which is amazing. Um, if you don't know the Wooly Thistle, you should. If you like Wooly Wool, yeah. Um, that's it, I think. <laughs> So it's been 15 minutes. That's pretty it's pretty standard for these days. Anyway, thank you for watching. This has been Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Bye.